In this demonstration of Crispin Shoemaker 2012, I should be showing you how to design uh, the upper and the sole for this men's shoe. So in Crispin, we have view controls down the right hand side, we have creation entities across the top, and we have options down the left hand side. And at the bottom, we have our libraries, which can be changed by clicking on the different uh, library buttons to open up um, all the various options in the libraries. Now, I could double click on the last to open um, one of the library lasts, but what we're going to do here is start the process by importing a last. Now, it's very common to uh, capture a physical last using digital data capture techniques like digitizing. Most of the data capture techniques will export um, triangle or STL data. So you can see here that I have a typical STL triangle model of a last. And as soon as we import that STL, um, Shoemaker prompts us with the last ID wizard to enter a set of points. So first of all, the heel top point, heel bottom point, point at the toe, and then a point at the top. So those points are used to align the data and also they're used to automatically detect where the top curve and the feather edge curve is. Okay, like so. We're happy with those curves. I can move forward to the next step where Shoemaker is now splitting the STL data into upper and lower part. And it's creating three surfaces. So a top surface, an upper surface, and a bottom surface for the last. And at this point, if we wish to, we can change the heel height toe spring by rolling the, the last using the slider bars. We could also change the, the swivel direction. At the moment, that looks fine. I can specify uh, left foot or right foot. In this case, we have a right foot last. Choose the sizing system. So here I'll say this is a UK men's size 8. And optionally, we can enter some information about the last, a name and a description. Okay, so hit the finish button. So the, the last surface is now created, but in Shoemaker, every last uh, has a flattening stored with it. So we're automatically entered into the flattening wizard, where I can select different options to affect the way the flattening occurs. Now in this case, I'm going to just take all of the default options. And what we should see, Shoemaker gives us two new 2D windows. So there we have the upper flattening using the fly out at the top. I can select the uh, sole flattening, bottom flattening, last bottom flattening. And of course we've got the, the 3D window for the last itself. Now uh, we have some control over the flattening so you can change the options on the flattening page. Um, and uh, we can also import a user-defined flattening. So if we have a prospect that's been using a last for some time and they already have an existing flattening for that last that they're happy with, we can uh, get them to capture that 2D flattening information um, as a digital format and we can import that and teach Shoemaker to use that as the upper flattening. So I'm going to um, import my uh, upper flattening which you can see there so there I've got some imported curves which we're going to use for the flattening of this particular last okay so on the uh, last um, op uh, the last creation mode uh, I've got all these options one of which on this flyout is called edit shell where I can say I'll be editing the inner or the outer so in this case we'll do the inner shell first select the curve that we wish to be the flattening and that flattening is modified. Repeat that process, but this time select outer. And again, select the curve and the flattening is modified like so. So that's now using the user defined flattening instead of the default flattening. OK, so moving forward on the creation entities, the next one is style lines. So if we drop into style line mode, I can start by sketching style lines where everything I sketch now is sketched on the last like so, and we can start to make a rough outline of our shoe, like so. 
touch on the feather edge, click two times to finish. Okay, so once I've sketched a curve, I can zoom in and I can edit points on the curve. I can drag the points around like so. Um, if I wish to, I could uh, extend the curve. So this curve here, select the curve and I could say, actually, I wanted to extend that. And we could extend that from either end. So I could use the T button on the keyboard to switch the end that we're extending from. And I can continue sketching that as I need to. Also, I've deliberately only sketched the curves on one side of the last, so I can perform a mirror operation, either a linked mirror or an unlinked mirror. If we perform a linked mirror, we get a copy on this side, and if I modify one side, let's drag this point down, the curve on the opposite side will automatically update. Okay, so I can sketch the curves like so. I'm gonna select those and delete them. Now, a very commonly used feature when sketching curves is to start with a designer sketch or even a, a photograph. So I'm going to select this uh, JPEG image and open it up and using the, the stencil tool um, you can see we can import this image. Now I can now use the dynamic controls to adjust the size and position and orientation of the last. I can also use the buttons on the stencil toolbar to adjust the image. So I can shrink the size of the image, I can pan the image around, I can move the image and generally adjust the last of the image to get a good fit between the two. When I'm happy I can remove the stencil toolbar and now when I move and pan around you can see the last and the image are moving together. Now if we uh, come out of our stencil view you'll notice that the stencil disappears and I can get the stencil back by uh, opening the fly out and returning to the stencil view. So obviously once that stencil is in place I can use that to sketch straight through the stencil onto the last to create the style lines to copy the designer's intent from the 2D image. Okay now as well as being able to have a stencil as a 2D if I open up the stencil toolbar again we can also perform a wrap operation to wrap that stencil onto the last and we can adjust the transparency like so. Now once we've wrapped the stencil on uh, we can then rotate the last and the stencil will remain in the view. So again we can sketch straight through the stencil image to create the star lines like so. And again we can turn the stencil on and off as we wish to like so. So after sketching some initial lines and showing the stencil functionality, we're going to jump to a different part where we have the same last but all of the uh, star line curves have been created and also we have some additional data which is stored on different levels just to help us avoid uh, repetition in the demonstration. So. Next creation activity is pieces and I'm going to select the uh, create shoe piece option and I'm going to guide shoemaker around my star line curves until we get a closed region. As soon as we give shoemaker a closed region uh, it creates a shoe piece for us like so. Okay so let me just turn the last off briefly and I'll show you that we have an inside material, we have an edge material and we have an outside material, all of which we can modify. Also if I double click the part we've got um, an offset and a thickness for each part. So if I open up the materials library to modify uh, the material I can open up any of the materials tabs and I can drag and drop a material from the database and that will update the design like so. So back to piece creation, as well as being able to trace around an area to create a shoe piece, I can also give a single left mouse button click in the center of a region and I can allow Shoemaker to do the searching for me. So there I've created a second part um, automa automatically. So at this point I'm going to turn on level 6 which will reveal the rest of the panels for this uh, design and I'm going to select this panel on the inside and I'm going to copy the properties from that panel and select all of the different material and offset options and then paste that uh, to the piece that I've just created 
and then repeat that hold down the control key to copy properties from that piece and paste them onto the other piece that we created to make a copy from the inside to the outside so the next creation entity is stitches and I have three different methods of creating stitching the first and most simple method is to, is to uh, simply sketch a, a line of stitches so I can select the stitch pattern from the uh, stitch library and I can use the, use the left mouse button and enter points in exactly the same way as we enter points to create star line curves okay these points can be edited so I can pick the points up and drag them around to change the shape of the stitch pattern so the other method or another method I have of creating um, stitches is with an offset so I'm going to create an um, is, is with a, a star line curve so I'm going to create an unlinked um, offset of this curve okay so unlinked offset and I'm going to enter at a distance of five millimeters going inwards and then I'll repeat that on the inside okay so another unlinked offset and this one is also five millimeters like so so I've created my curves again move forward to stitching the second option is to create stitching from an existing star line curve so if I click those curves that we've just created shoemaker creates the stitching but it also understands that we have shoe pieces and it automatically positions the stitching on the outermost piece of the shoe like so now the third method of creating stitching is edge stitching so I can select ed edge stitching I can select the piece that I wish to have the edge stitching applied to and I can then interactively select the edges that I wish the stitching to be added to shoemaker will show me a preview of that stitching when I'm happy I can give a right mouse click and that stitching is created like so so at this point again to avoid repetition I'm going to turn on level 7 where all of my other stitching is already created and again I'm going to use the copy properties just to copy and paste material properties from the existing stitching to the new stitching and this will change not only the material but it will also change the offset repeat pattern etc like so so the next creation activity is pipes and again we have a library of 2d cross-sectional shapes that we can apply to our pipes so I'm just going to go for a straightforward round pipe and again a couple of different methods of creating pipes we can either sketch them or we can use existing star line curves so here I'm going to use the existing star line curves and as soon as I pick the curve the pipe is created so let me create one pipe on one side and I'll repeat that operation on the other side of the design and I'm now going to select those two pipes that we've just created and we're going to, to edit them so I can edit uh, the offset um, across the last or away from the last and I can also change the size of these so I'm going to move them away from the last and move them into the design like so position them so that they're just about uh, passing into the design like so and then again select the pipes open up the material library and I'll drag and drop a material like so to create the pipes at the back so continuing with this design the next creation entity is uh, punches and again we have a library of different uh, punch shapes I can open up and use categorized rounds triangle squares now on this design we do have some uh, existing um, punch holes I'm just going to select and blank the uh, the lining material so we can see straight through the punch holes to the last to make these slightly more clear okay so again punches different methods of creating them I can either use existing curves or I can sketch a new line of punches so I'm going to say sketch and I'm going to select the circular punches I'm going to hold down the control key to get a corner point and just sketch this kind of zigzag pattern like so now I've got um, the other punch geometry stored on level 8 so I'm going to turn that on at this point and I'm going to select some of the existing punch holes or the existing punch geometry and I'm going to say copy the size of that and paste it onto the line of punches that we just created okay like so 
Okay, um, so that's the first line of punches created. Now I need an exact copy on, on the other side, so I can either do a linked or an unlinked mirror. So here if I say an unlinked mirror to get a copy, and then we'll punch those straight through the last. So I can choose whether I'm going right the way through to the last or whether I'm going through the first layer. So here I'm going to just choose the first layer of material. So when I draw the lining piece, we'll be able to see that um, underneath the last. Okay, now that punch geometry is no longer needed, so I'm going to uh, put it onto level 8 and then turn that off with the other punch geometry. And there you can see the additional punch holes that we've added into the design. Uh, the next creation entity is accessories, and again I'll open up the library of accessories where we have eyelets, lugs, different buckles and zips, etc. Okay, and Two methods of using accessories, I can either uh, double click an accessory and then click to create a single instance of an accessory, which we could then edit, so I could rotate that around, I could change the size of it, make it bigger or smaller. I'll delete that because I'm actually going to create a line of accessories, which I, either I can do with an existing style line or I can sketch a new line of accessories. So I'm going to select the accessory that I wish to design with and click two or more points to create my sketch curve and double click to finish the creation. So here I'm going to make those uh, first of all slightly bigger and I'll also increase the number from four to five like so. I'm going to come to my materials tab, select metal and I'll drag and drop one of the metal materials off the library. I want a copy of those which can either be a linked or an unlinked mirror. So let's make an unlinked mirror to get a second set of accessories on the other side, like so. Now certain accessories are tagged as being suitable for laces. So if I jump forward to the laces activity um, and I hover over the flyout, you can see we're presented with a different selection of uh, lace patterns that we could apply, shop lacing, straight lacing, etc. So I'm going to go for crisscross lacing and I'm going to select using the shift button both sets of um, eyelets that I've created right mouse click and my lace pattern is created now again on the materials um, tab I have a laces tab which contains materials uh, which have been added and they're particularly suitable for lacing purposes so I can select the laces and then drag and drop these materials um, to change the material used for the laces if I wish to. Like so. So for the final section of this demonstration we'll look at soles and we'll start with a simple formal sole. So if I select the um, sole creation entity I can hover over this flyout and I can select create formal sole and Shoemaker will automatically analyze the design and create uh, a simple sole for us which is in two, two bits, the sole itself and the heel. I can double click, click the sole and change some of the settings so I can change the thickness at the toe and at the heel. I can also change the lateral thickness from the feather edge to change the way the sole looks. I can also double click the heel which will open up the heel creation toolbar and this lets me dynamically change uh, design criteria for the heel. So if I stretch the length of the heel like so. Okay now also uh, the heel has um, separate materials so I can come to the materials and I can drag and drop them uh, either directly uh, into the background to change all faces or I can drag and drop onto one of the faces of the heel just to change an individual face. Okay, now the, uh, the heel itself uh, and the, the main sole uh, I'm not going to keep, so I'm going to delete those and just let um, Shoemaker reform the model. And we're going to make a slightly more complex sole. So I'm going to start by dropping into advanced mode by clicking this button here, which will reveal uh, some of the uh, power shape style uh, buttons. Okay, so I'm going to look straight down Z on the design and just zoom out and I'm going to start by opening up the view flyout and selecting stencil and I'm going to open a stencil which is again a designer sketch. 
this time of slightly more of the uh, of the design. Okay, now we've got the same controls as in uh, as when in Shoemaker, so I can pan and zoom the last, and I can also change uh, the image as well itself, like so. When I'm happy, I can remove the stencil toolbar and you can see everything's locked together. So this stencil can then be used again for sketching purposes. So I'm going to just sketch a Bezier curve snapping onto the sketch to capture some of the designer's uh, intended shape like so. Open up the stencil toolbar again, delete that stencil just to show the curve that we've sketched and then delete that curve. Okay, so that's how we can sketch um, curves uh, to, to help us to, to create the shape of the sole. Now I'm going to start here by just making a copy of the last surfaces and then just selecting only surfaces and blanking everything else. So there I've got a, a s copies of the surfaces that make up the last. Now I'm only actually interested in the bottom surface, so I'm going to select the upper two surfaces and delete them. And then I'm going to turn on level 15, which contains the wireframe data um, that I need to create the design. Now this could have been created using the, the stencil sketch. So I'm going to select the first curve, which is on the edge of the, the bottom of the last. I'm going to come to surface creation. I'm going to check my construction plane is Z. And I'm going to create a split surface, 10 millimeter distance, angle zero, like so. Zooming in, I'm going to pick the outside edge of that and convert that into wireframe geometry, which I'll select, check my construction axis is Z, and create an extrusion. That extrusion is in the wrong direction, so I can grab the drag handle and change it, and then I'll convert that extrusion uh, so it's no longer a primitive. And I'm going to use uh, the bottom edge of that to modify the shape of that surface that we've just created. And the modification I'm going to do is to, uh, is to use a different wireframe curve. So let me just drop into wireframe mode for a second and I'm going to select this green coloured curve as the curve that we're going to match to. And I'm going to make that as lateral 2 and say preview and there you can see that we've changed the general outside shape of the sole. Zooming in, I'm going to select the wavy curve make sure my construction axis is Y, create an extrusion of that and make sure we have that equal lengths in both direction and convert that surface so again it's no longer um, a primitive. I'm going to join those two main surfaces together with a fillet, enter a fillet radius of 1 and ask for a preview of where the fillet radius will go. When I'm happy with the preview I can say OK and Shoemaker creates the fillet and trims everything back. Again, select the this time the pink or purple curve, check the construction axis is set to Y, create an extrusion, which I'll double click and set to equal lengths and then convert. And again, select the black 2D wireframe, construction axis Z, extrusion, and just make that slightly smaller. And again, convert it so it's no longer a primitive and we'll join those two together again with a fillet radius so select the two preview where the fillet will fit OK selects everything and trims it back and then we'll trim those two uh, bits of model together again with a fillet radius this time 0.5 against uh, that bottom surface there change to a convex fillet preview the centerline trace and accepts the fillet creation which trims everything back for us like so. Okay so let me select all of those surfaces and I'll change the colour of them by dragging and dropping a material from the library and I'll do that again so we have a different colour like so. Now I'm going to look straight down in Z and I'm going to select uh, this piece of tread pattern because what we're going to do is add some detail to this now and to start off with, I'm going to unwrap that surface to turn it into a 2D curve. So you can see at the moment it's a singly curved surface. And to create detail tread on this, it would be much easier to do this um, if I had a flat outer profile. So I'm using the curve unwrapping. I'm going to ask for a preview of the cordal unwrap, which let me, lets me manage any distortions that we have. And I'm going to unwrap that curve 
to the world coordinate system like so. Let me draw that curve on its own. So there we have the 2D flat profile, which I could now use to start to sketch geometry. So I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to create a circle and just drag the diameter of that circle and then drag another copy and change the uh, diameter or radius of that one as well. And again, repeat that, just drag, confirm, pick and change and so on and so on. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just delete those curves and turn on level 16 which contains some triangle tread pattern that I've already created with these circular shapes and with a crisping logo like so. Okay, so we're now going to wrap that onto the surface that we unwrapped. Okay, so reselect the surface and come to the triangle wrapping. Select the triangles from level 16. Now because we've unwrapped the surface we don't need to go through all the wrapping again um, because Shoemaker will rewrap those triangles and back onto the, the surface and in this case we've got the trim option active so after wrapping the triangles it will also uh, trim all of the bits of tread pattern into our um, sole surface. So, so if I spin that around you can see we've got the triangle data wrapped onto the bottom of our sole. Okay so let me just select our unwrap curve and I'm going to put that onto level 16 and then turn that off and let me just copy and paste the colour back onto the bottom surface like so and I'll select our uh, tread pattern and I'll drag and drop a colour from the materials library. Now I want the logo to be a, a different colour so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the triangle editing tool and I'll select the um, discrete lasso mode and I'm going to select um, paint triangles and I'll select the colour of red and if I now lasso around the logo anything which is inside my, my lasso is uh, coloured red. I'm then going to change the colour from red to white and I'll change my selection method to a discontinuity angle 20 as a default should be fine and then I'll click in the bottom of all of these uh, letter pockets and I'll change all of the uh, bottom letters just to white so that the logo stands out clearly Ok so now my um, sole is almost complete, the last thing I'm going to do is just to uh, add some additional detail onto the side, so I'm going to instrument this point, I'm going to hold down uh, the control key and I'm going to drag a couple of uh, new curves into this surface, like so, and like so, and then I'll select uh, the curve in the centre and I'm going to perform an edit operation just on that curve and the edit operation I'll perform is going to be an offset and I'll offset that inwards by one millimeter to make this kind of groove effect on the bottom and then I'm going to divide that surface up so I'm going to select the curves either side and I'll say divide that up and that will allow me to give um, that surface a different color so let's make that red and then the final thing I'll do is just to make uh, a fillet radius to smooth off that edge. So surface creation, um, create a fillet, enter the fillet radius, convex, ask for a preview, accept and OK. And then I'll change the colour of all of those um, top bits of the sole like so. OK, so my design's finished, so now I'm going to hit the tick to accept the changes and to take the sole back into um, Shoemaker. So now when I turn my uh, sole button on and off, Shoemaker understands that all those surfaces and triangles that we've just created in advanced mode are part of the design. And the final thing I'll do is just to select this tongue piece and I'm going to wrap a, an image um, onto that piece. So again, I'm going to open the stencil toolbar. I'm going to select this uh, Crispin JPEG, which is imported. And again, use the controls on the stencil toolbar just to get the 
image in the correct position use the controls to uh, rotate the last around to get everything in the right place when I'm happy with the location I can say wrap that image onto the uh, piece that we had selected and then exit the stencil toolbar and there we have our crisping logo wrapped onto the tongue of our design.